Hello, welcome to Yarn Lane. Completely different channel, but in the same studio, same presenter, same guest. Different website, remember? Now, remember, if you want to follow it, well, if you want to buy anything, you need to go to the Yarn Lane website, right? This is the website. Here we go. Here it comes. Yeah. It's coming. It is coming. Promise. There it is. There it is. So it's the Yarn Lane website. It's set out exactly the same as the Sewing Street one. So they click on what's uh, on Watch Live, scroll down the page, on pre-order, everything from this hour is there. Important thing for this show, hang on, I haven't got, oh, you say, you say, you say. Oh, yeah, you see the ball of yarn, you're actually paying for three. You're actually paying for three. They've only put a picture of one, but you're actually getting three. Now, when you go to the wool, or to the yarn, sorry, to the yarn, if you go to more details, you'll see in there a brief description of, of what Wendy's about to do, of the different stitches. You don't get a download, you don't go to a different place to watch it. It's written in there, in the design details. Okay, can you just scroll back up again? Because I think there's something there. Oh, no, I thought there was something I couldn't, I couldn't, um, I hadn't got. But anyway, right, so I'll go through what I've got for sale for you today, and then Wendy will start the demonstration. As you can see, there's some very chunky knit yarns on the table. Where would you like to go first, Hannah, please? Aqua. Now, now, if you've ever been to a shop to buy this, right, they have several aquas, right? There are several aquas. This is a darker aqua. It's this one here. I'll, put, I'll, I'll pick, pick it up so you can see it there. Remember, you get your three balls for your $29.99. That's 28 yards, 100% polyester, machine wash, lay flat to dry, 30 degrees, do not iron. They're basically saying these five balls for a scarf and five balls for two cushions. Oh, well, is that two cushions? It's confusing. But for the extra large floor cushion that we're showing, you need all three balls. You need all three balls, right? Wendy's just looking at it now. Do you see underneath, underneath there, there's a picture of a scarf and it says five balls and then it's got... It's not a scarf. I thought it was a scarf, it's a blanket. It's not a scarf. Oh, it's a blanket, apparently. That's a scarf, whoever That's drew that. Anyway, 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 that's your aqua. Oh, 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 oh. it feels gorgeous, right? So that's aqua. Get all three for your... Ooh, glasses got stuck there. 29.99. 29.99. There it is. The three balls are there. Should we do pomegranate next? Oh, you can stay there. Stay there. Pomegranate here. You get your three. Now, um, apparently the picture on the web looks a lot darker. I would describe it as a bricky, flamey red. Well, somewhere between brick and somewhere between brick and flame. Right? And it's been on a fire course this week. Um... It's, uh, well, I don't know what colour of pomegranate is, really. It's more darker, pinky, reddy, isn't it? Anyway, it's a lovely colour. It's a beautiful colour. Don't go by the colour that's on the website. Go by the colour you're seeing on your telly. Now. They're what, Paul? They are beautifully soft. It's almost you can feel like a spine within the yarn and then the fluffy bit around the outside. So it's going to be good and strong as well. Now, we'll move on to rose quartz. Rose quartz, now that, oh now, if it was a gemstone, it would entice love into your life, wouldn't it? Or, or surround you with love, a rose quartz. Hannah's thinking big cushion. She'll, be, she'll just love a big cushion. Oh, Paul. That's the second thing you've said today that's concerned me. Anyway. Paul. Rose. No. Rose quartz, three balls, $29.99. Do they call them balls when they're that big? <laughs> right, that's rose quartz. And then moving on to Wendy's favourite at the end. Willow. If your willow was that colour, you'd chop it down, wouldn't you, really, if you think about it? This is very on trend at the moment, isn't it, this grey? Very, very on trend. It's a very soft, 
dove grey. Where they've got willow from, I have no idea. Okay, so they're the yarns I've got for sale in this hour. I've also got your skipping rope. It's not, try, well, I have to say, it's not skipping rope. It's not long enough to be a skipping rope, but if little Paul was using it. Yeah, look, so you can see there. It's a jumbo birch knit pro. For those who love to knit, it says. They're 25 millimeters fat. Big needles for bulky knitting. Thank you for that. It's going to be unusual. That's, that's what Wendy's going to use in a minute. I don't think she's got, actually got this. But she's got hers from home, but they're exactly the same. Almost identical. Exact, almost identical, yeah. Yours look a bit shinier than mine. Look, I've got a varnish on them. Anyway, that's them at £10.49. What else I've got this hour is I've got little bodkin. Well, they're not so little, are they? Oh! Oh, I've never seen a bodkin like that before. Right, look. Right, watch, 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 watch. I'll wait for Paul to come in. Can you see? Look, they've got, look, look, they've got, can you see those? Aren't they got, I've, because when, um, when, um, Wendy came in, she said, have we got the, um, she went like that. We got the needles with that. And Hannah went, yeah. And I'm like, no, we haven't. We haven't. I hadn't seen those little loopy bits on the end. Then what you do, Paul, is you put your yarn through there. So if you're sewing together like a jumper or a seam on the knitwear, you put your yarn through there and then you pull it through like a normal needle. But that's like the eye of the needle. But for, to get that through it, to get that through it, you'd have to be like that, wouldn't you? Get two of those. And then just some little scissors here. Little snippy scissors. One billion of these sold. That was just me last Friday. Sweet, aren't they? Superior comfort and performance. Sharp tips for precision cutting. Made in Finland, 13 centimetres. Oh, Susan. Hello, Susan, my love. Thank you. Oh, now Stuart says, great needles. Love knit pro. Now Stuart does knitting. Blimey, Stuart, have you not got any customers in your shop today? You've been with us all day today. He's been very busy recently, I have to say. Right, that's it. That's it. So, now, I'll show you a picture of what we're going to make. Right, little Paul's got a picture, right? There's two sides to every story. There's two sides. So, that's stockings. Oh, well, the first one was stocking stitch, and the second one was lard. Oh, garter. Garter, not lard. Garter. There it is. So, Wendy's going to show you. You've got a long time to show us two stitches. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> I'll let you get on with it. I'll see you in an hour's time. When she's finished, I'll come back and... Okay, so... Yes. Impress me. Well, this is gorgeous. This is... Well, you can feel it. It's really, yeah. really soft, this wool, isn't it? And it knits up so, so quick. Now, I'm just going to be doing knitting today, but there's nothing to stop you crocheting with it. How big is your blooming crochet big. hook? You'd need a big one. Do we sell the big ones here? What's the, When you say big, what size? Well, that's... 25. Have you ever seen anything as big as that? Uh, pardon. <laughs> Don't do things like that to me when you know I'm going to get into trouble. They, no, I've never even seen a skipping rope that short. They are ginormous. Um, it's not for the faint-hearted. They're so much fun and these are so much fun. Okay. Um, but they work with something as big as well, this. Well, no, exactly. But you would be able to do it with a crochet as well. Yeah, you can get huge hooks. Okay. You can get ginormous hooks. I mean, I know we do all different sizes on the website, but I don't know if we go that big on the website. But the great thing about this is you don't need anything at all. You just need your hands. So you can either knit with needles or you can knit with your fingers. Oh, so okay. I'm going to show you both ways. Yeah, and brilliant. It was you and I the other. Yeah, the but that, other well, that yarn had loops right. on it that you pushed them through. Okay, so it's exactly the same principle. Now, this stocking here. Is that one of Hannah's? Well, I actually found Paul inside it in the break. Oh, yeah. that would um, be so cute. It'd be like a little dormouse <laughs> coming out of his sleep, wouldn't it? This one actually takes two balls. This oh, that makes two balls. That right. makes two balls. And this is... It, it takes two balls to make, yeah. Takes two balls to make. Yeah. It's finger knitting. Um, so you knit with your fingers. Oh, okay. So that's not using those... That's not using. Okay. No, this is finger knitting. Now, right. this one... Which I don't know, it's, it is huge. It doesn't look it on the screen, but it's huge. Yeah. This is knitting with the needles. Okay, and how much this, yarn this is that? This takes up? the three balls. Okay. So, even, 
Now, I know mm. you've done a different stitch on the other side to show the different stitches. Could you have made it bigger had you only done all stocking stitch or would that not have made any difference? No, it's the same amount. Of, okay. It's the same amount of wool. It's just with a uh, garter stitch, you just knit, 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 knit all the way. And with stocking stitch, you do one row knit, one row purl. Oh, okay. okay. So it's the same amount of stitches, you just do a different yes. stitch. It just looks, it, the garter side so that's looks, the like, stock, it's, yeah, that's looks the like it's stocking. busier. It looks like it's got more links on that side. No, no, no. It's just... Um, but it's the way you it's where you have your yarn at the start of the stitch right so with the plain stitch you have it at the back and with the pearl you have it at the front okay. and it's just the way it forms so if you were to look at the back of stocking stitch yeah it would look like a very very close weave knit because it looks like completely plain oh, okay. on one side and yeah. pearl on the other so that's what it looks like okay brilliant um so that's those so where would you, where should we start let's start with the finger knitting oh okay and i tell you why because that's remember we were on a couple of weeks ago yes uh, i'm going to do no i'm going to do the red right um, pomegranate pomegranate po please and it's, it's uh, can i tell you the gray is the most popular so I'm far i'm not surprised that's actually my favorite and you know when you said what's it called willow is that the tree that has the little catkins on it? No. Oh, that's Pussy Willow. <laughs> I'm thinking of Weeping Willow. Ah, oh, see, that's what reminds me because those little catkins the little, oh, are yes, kind the thing, of yes, great. Yes, so maybe is. that was. So it should have been called Pussy Willow, not Willow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Pussy Willow. Right, so we're going to start with the finger knitting. Now, this is exactly the same for those that watched it a couple of weeks ago. It's exactly the same principle, but you don't have any loops. No. You have to create your own. Right. So to do that, I'm just going to unwind a bit because it's quite chunky and you were quite you you explained it beautifully and i can't remember what you said now but it has got that bit of that feels like it's got a spine in the spine, middle that's not, not, the word. not hard it no, just no. feels like there's like a little it has mini a rope inside it there. is um and yeah, i can feel it and if you really press hard you can feel it but because it's so fluffy around the outside it's it has some resistance to it so i would um advise that you work really loosely don't work really tight because there is quite a bit of resistance there okay uh, can i ask, ask if you cut it does it all unravel away absolutely not okay and again because of that little spine that you mentioned that's what holds all the strands okay. together so yes you are going to get a little bit of fluffing oh, and it, cut, yeah. you, but that you would anyway mm -hmm. with any thick wool like this so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a slip knot and it's exactly the same principle um, as we did last time, is that you just have your tail, which is this bit uh -huh. here, and then this bit, all this bit here, which is coming from the ball, is called your working yarn. Right, you hope. And that's, it's the same for every ball of wool that you use. The, the wool that's coming from the ball is your working yarn. So you take your tail and you place it over the working yarn and you get your hand and you just reach through and pull that working yarn. And that is your slip knot. That right. is it. I don't want to pull this one too tight. You can see that as I move this up and down, it's making it bigger and smaller. I don't want to pull it too tight because remember that spine is deep with inside. So it creates a big fluffy um, strand here and that's where the resistance comes. Right. And then all I'm going to do to create a stitch, I'm going to reach through that slip knot and pull the working yarn and pull it through. And I've created a stitch. That's a stitch. It's like another slip knot. It is, isn't it? Yeah. So we do exactly the same. We push our, we pull up, put our hand through the loop we've just um, worked, reach through, grab the working yarn and pull it through. So that's now creating a row of stitches. Yeah. And you want to keep these fairly loose. So you reach through and pull that working yarn up. Reach through and pull that working yarn. And I'm now creating a row of stitches. Well, interesting question from little Paul. Can you only do finger knitting with such thick yarn or can you do it with finer knitting yarns? You can't go too fine. Right. Uh, well, you could. You could do it, but it just means that you're going to have quite an open weave. Right. So when you work, the, the thinner the yarn, the general rule is the smaller the needle. So the thinner the needle to give you nice tight stitches. Yeah. But of course, if you're after a really open weave, there's nothing to stop you doing this method, but it's going to be very holy because and very Because back lacy. in my punk days... I, I would, remember those days. I would wear jumpers that were such loose weave and then you'd pull... 
not holes in them, but you pull well, them. Kind the of, yeah. yes. Yeah, they weren't really <coughs> holes that would, you, you just no, used no. to pull you them just, apart. It was so far, uh, loosely woven that you could just pull the threads to the side. Yeah, of the thing. It, I mean, again. Like a cobweb, almost. Yes, like a cobweb. yes, it was. I remember those. And I actually remember um, having one of those in like a soft yarn. Um, but the thing with any form of craft, it's your interpretation. Just have a play. Mm -hmm. So yes, if you want to do that with smaller, there's nothing to stop you. But obviously, your fingers are only a certain size, yeah. so you can't go too small. Yeah. So you get a pull. Yes. So you can do that if you like, Paul. I, I will show. I can show Paul how to do it. So I'm just creating these stitches, and then you get them as wide as you want. Now with the with the stocking. Um, the pattern, I'm not sure, I will ask Bex where the pattern, where we can locate the pattern, um, but you work in the round. So you do the required number of stitches and then you loop back to, you don't do the one that created the slip knot, but you push it through the oh. one that we started off to create a round. Right, okay. Now this is bigger because the small stitches, yeah. um, but that's how you would do it. Okay, now I'm just going to do it in the straight just so it's easier for everyone to see. Yeah. But you would just keep going round and round and, and round. And it gets longer, you make a and tube. And that's, that's what would create this tube But like there's a here. toy going back donkey's years now that used to be like a cotton reel and you'd wind your mm. yarn round it and then the tube would come out the bottom. I don't know what it was called. They're knitting mills. They're, okay. they're, they're yeah, watch that's this different. face. Is watch, that different? That's oh, completely okay. different. Okay. Yeah, you, you start, um, the, the needles do all the work for you. You just turn the handle and the needles. Oh, there wasn't a handle Oh, no, there is now. Oh, no, well, oh, I am going back quite yes. a few years. It was literally like watch a big cotton space. bobbin and you just went round and somehow the-, the It creates a yeah. tube. So, although it doesn't look it because it just looks like cord, there is a hole yes, in between. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. So what we're going to do is we're going to do exactly the same as we did um, before with the loops that we're going to create them this time. So to create a plain stitch we want our working yarn which is the one remember attached to the ball behind. So we take our first loop in the row and we just pull that working yarn up and through. Now this is what determines your tension John here right. because if you pull a massive loop yeah. to your question you're going to have a huge holy item if you make it a smaller loop, it's going to be much But haven't you just carried on along the line? Well, if we were making the stocking, you just go in the round and you just keep going round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so uh, this one, yes. So I've stopped. You just got, right. I've stopped here. Yeah. And now I'm going to work back. Oh, okay. So working in rows, you would work back. Working in the stocking, right. you just got keep it, going round and round. Yeah. When, when you've done that, because it's exactly the same as the one with the loops, but without the loops, we're yeah. creating them. And it does mean that you need to be quite uniform because you need to keep these the same length. So all we do is pull the working yarn up through the next stitch. Mm -hmm. Now again, if I were to pull that one really big, then the, the tension's going to be quite inconsistent. Yeah. So you want to keep them roughly the same size. Now because of that spine, you do want to have it quite loose, really. You don't want to be pulling it too tight. And then you just work along a row, pulling that yarn from the back to the front to create a loop. And as you go along, you can keep them the same size. And oh, yeah, so you are creating what we had. Exactly. <coughs> if you weren't watching a few weeks, a couple of weeks ago, we had a yarn that was like this, but the loops were already stitched into place, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. Uh, can I just say, Sylve says that it's called French knitting, John. It was. I used to have one of those bobbins about 100 years ago. Well, Sylve, you're slightly older than me, but you know. But they were actually in the shape of a little lady. Back, way back. Oh, I mean, yeah. we're talking way Victorian back. Victorian now. Mm, all right. Not oh, no, no. You mean when you, I thought you meant, I thought oh, you were no, talking no. history. No, when, when, when I, my first one, I had, um, she was dressed in red with black hair. And she was in the shape, she had a very nice shapely figure, but she had four little loops on the top of the thing. And it was the way that you just. Uh, ah, yes. okay. And, and then, the ones I remember just like looked like big wooden cotton bobbins. But you could do them with, um, when I lost mine, um, I had one that you just put, you might, I made one. Okay. <laughs> so all I'm doing is creating a row of loops, right. but just from flat, from flat yarn. And then we go back exactly the same way. So we just pull the working yarn through the back of that loop. Oh, so it's, ide up. it's absolutely it, it identical, is identical to what we did a couple of weeks ago, but without the loops being so That's near. finger knitting, but the difference is you have to work the tension, you have to be consistent. Whereas yes, because the they were already done for you. Yeah. And they were exactly, each loop, well, not exactly, because wool is never going to be exactly, no, but, yeah. um, but they were 
uniform where these you have to create your own yeah. so I kind of guess and this is where you know the artist can come out and you if you wanted to do maybe every few rows a really long stitch you have what you're making I suppose exactly isn't it? Um, but they make three balls I've done three balls on needles and it's roughly a 30 inch square with right. three of the balls and that would be brilliant if you made a nice big floor cushion. You'd, you'd obviously have to back it with some fabric or something. Yeah. Um, but what a great way. I'm, I'm all for like cutting up old jeans or using all my remnants. So, so I would put so that on So if you the back. did that, you'd, you'd, so you'd knit your square, finish off, and then use it as a piece of fabric. You'd put a piece of Liberty, say, on this side and just sew around the edge and pull it through. And so you'd never have to cut any of that. And that is this all right to stitch on the machine? I would hand sew. Oh, OK. I, I've never tried it, actually, to be perfectly honest, but I can't see how it's going to work on a machine because if you have this underneath and the, the material on the top, there's a chance of it getting caught in the yeah. bottom. And if you have it the other way round, then the needle's the not needle, going no. to cope with, with that. So, But that's perfect. I mean, I love hand sewing, and I know there are a lot of um, ladies and gentlemen out there that also love hand sewing, so that's what I would yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then all you would do is you would lay your finished... And you'd stitch it with this? You'd stitch it with itself? Again, no. I oh no, you couldn't because you couldn't because yeah. you wouldn't be able to get that through the fabric. Yeah. So I do it with a very I, I do it with a neutral cotton and small stitches if I oh, could. Okay. Um, I don't think you'd probably want to put a zip in it, but it's one no. of those things that it's literally just going to be sponge sponge wiper, boys, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so that's how we would make that. But remember that um, I, I will just do one more row because then it's going to be very obvious to you when I change the stitch. So this is going to create. A plain stitch. Now if you want to create a purl stitch uh, all you need to do is change the position of your working yarn and you can see just by me talking John it yep. just works up very good although you're not listening to me. No because Elizabeth says hers was called a dolly bobbin. Oh, yes they were. And Susan's was called rat tail. Oh. Oh. Do you think that if you said that's the right one? Oh Claire says they're still available in the shops now. So they they are still around where they look like ladies in a red dress. I presume so, or a rat's tail. <laughs> um, sorry to interrupt. Well, the grey one, the the willow is down to single figures now. Single figures. The what? You get three balls down to single figures. Oops, there we go. It's this one I'm showing you in the middle here. Now let me move those and those. There you go. So you get three balls, three of those. For £29.99, but we are down to single figures on the grey, on the willow. Okay, right. As I say, that is my favourite and that is sewing at the moment. Okay, quick um, question then. If, oh, you, yes. if you wanted to do, if you bought the red and the grey, could you do three rows of red and then a couple of rows of grey and then go at the red again? Now, what I did with this one, but this just is how I, this is, you know, how my mind works. I didn't join the wall part part row. Oh yes, because you've got balls, three balls in there, haven't you? Yeah. I actually left it at the end. So I joined at the end. And what I did is I left quite a substantial tail so that that's what I sewed it up with. Oh, okay. And it's brilliant. You don't mm -hmm. even, you just, you just sew it, you just put it uh, very, very loosely. So yeah. you can't actually see, when you look on that, you can't really see where it's been sewn. Yeah. Um, so that's what I did, but you can join it I guess probably the best way to join it would be just to sew it because you wouldn't want to tie it because tying this would cre create a huge knot and you don't want it to no. show. So I would, when you come to the end, just leave it at the end of the row. Right. So you Sorry. can see here already I've worked up. It's, it works up so, yeah. so quick. And now I'm going to change. That's my plain stitch. So now I'm going to change to a purl stitch. And all I simply do is take my working yarn and bring it to the front. It's like a big sausage. It's like spaghetti. Yeah. And then instead of not to come to your house for dinner. <laughs> and then instead instead of pulling it from the back, we push it through to the back. So we take the loop and we push the working yarn through to the back. Okay, it's a message coming across the bottom of the screen saying, Hi John and Wendy, I purchased the loppy yarn for my nine year old granddaughter and she made a scarf. She was thrilled at the result. Rosemary in Northamptonshire. Oh, Rosemary, if you've got a picture, if you did you take a picture? If you did, can you just tag me in it so I can have a look? And I Isabel love... bought two of the Dolly Maiden things, Dolly Bobbin things for her grandchildren recently. They, they are making a comeback because remember what you were saying earlier about it's all, you know, being mindful and, and craft. And I think that if you can get children busy, 
um, was doing things like this and creating. Uh, but also, and I don't want to get all medical and thingy here, but there's, um, in my day, and I mean, it's just the way we were, there was, there was no such thing as anxiety. And, uh, you know, you see these poor kids at school now, well, not poor kids, they're being looked after, but kids get... Uh, uh, maybe I did have anxiety when I was a child, and I'm sure I did because I got bullied like nobody's business, but I didn't think of it as anxiety, but it's kind of like if your child, like the colouring in thing we were saying earlier is brilliant for it. Something like this, if your child has got anxiousness, then maybe, it, because I'm not a doctor, so I can't obviously say whatever, but I just think it might be a nice thing for them, for them to do. But I, I certainly know that if I'm feeling a bit stressed in life, I always reach for my craft. And I, I feel so on privileged that I'm able to do so many crafts. I don't just do these three. Yeah. You know, I do woodwork, I do jewelry making, I do so many things. So I'm able to pretty much keep my mind active and it really does help. It doesn't shut you up though, does it? It doesn't shut me up. <laughs> I don't think anything will shut me up. So you can, you can see here. Yeah, Anna says we're looking for a craft for that now. <laughs> oh, do let me know. But normally just my tongue comes out when I'm concentrating. Oh, yeah. If it's something new. But oh, so if it, it's something really concentrating, then you have to stop talking. All right. Well, yeah, because then my tongue comes out. So just find me something. So you can see here, sorry, Paul, to mess you about. You can see that I've changed just literally, instead of pulling the yarn from the back to the front, yeah. I've pushed it from the front to the back. So it's created a completely different stitch. So yeah. this one is the pearl, yeah. and then you've got the plain. So you could actually, I, I've done the cushion in half and half, but what you could do is you could do a few rows of plain, a few rows yeah, of yeah, pearl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's no, nice. It's, uh, but it it's is, very textural, isn't it's it? It's so, so soft. It really, really is. But, um, you know, I will just give you a little bit of advice. If you do keep the tension nice and loose, it's going to be soft. I can see Delphine... Looking at that, because I can see a field of poppies in that. Oh. You, you know what I mean? Creating pictures. Um, right, just a second, because Hannah needs to show us something. Right, first of all, message from Jan that says, I recently bought a dolly bobbin off Yarn Lane. We, oh, it's gone. Where's it? I, I can't see it over there now. Oh. Takes me to the charter. Oh, we sell them on our website. Oh, look. That's it. If you saw, search Dolly on Yarn Lane, there it is. Now, this just goes to show, mine was a wooden bobbin. Was she like that then? That's what mine was like, but she was dressed in red. She was almost, she might have even been from Wales. Did she have a, like a Hannah face like that one's got? No, smiley, smiley with the big rosy cheeks. That's but that was so pretty, that one is. And that's oh, it's a, obviously not like Hannah then. That's a really good price. <laughs> well, you want to buy two? Hannah's ordering two of these. <laughs> a really good price. And, you know, it does, the, it takes you quite a lot of time. The excitement I had when I started. How and brilliant. Then it popped out the bottom, John. I mean, sometimes it took a very long time to be able to see any out the bottom. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was yeah, yeah. so excited when I actually could see it. Um, and then you would normally put something a little bit heavier on the bottom so that to as you're working, it just weights yeah. it down. But you How? Can make, I didn't even know we sold those. They make, they, they make eye cords and you can make so much with them. But that's, yeah. that's for another, another time. Day. Another yeah, day. Yeah, that's for another day. But this is, um, yes, just my one little bit of advice would be, again, it's up to you when you get it home, do what you want. But because it's so thick, that you want it to be nice and fluid. If I'd have done really, really small stitches, which you can, it's entirely up to you, it's gonna make it more rigid. Okay, and I, which I, depends what you're making, I suppose. But I, I actually tend to think that chunky needs to be like, yeah. really soft and that. But that's the finger knitting version of it. Right. Um, so that shows you how to do the two stitches. So you could alternate them. And you could, yes, you're quite right, you could buy two packs and you could change the colours. But what I would do then, as I say, I would leave the wool at the side and then you can weave it in to, to join. Yes. Brilliant. So that's the finger knitting. Okay. Yeah. And then the, we're going to try and find the stocking instructions, yes, aren't we? Please. Put it on the website. Yes, and find please. Yes, please. Um, okay. Right, I'm going to do this. Aqua. Color. I love this. What's color. the matter, Han? Oh, no. <laughs> Anne's, <laughs> Anne's was called the Knitting Nancy. Now that. They, they did have lots of names. Oh. They did. They did have lots of names. Also yeah, we take them more notice now. We, we used to call them knitting dollies. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, again, I, sp I guess it depends what era you were born yes. in and how old. But yes, I, I remember having it from a very, very young age. So they're, you know, I'm sure they were out long before I was born oh, yes. as well. I'm sure it was like a, almost, that's why I said Victorian to you, because it reminds me of a Victorian child's plaything. But how wonderful that would have been when they, because mm. but did they, because when before electricity and stuff like yes, that, they yeah. would have lost the light and they would have all had to have gone to bed. Yeah, but they? if you look at when Jane Greenough comes in and there are little girls in workhouses doing samplers in mm. 1760, mm. you know, they wouldn't have had any light, Crazy. would they? What do you want to say, Hannah, sorry? 
Oh, well, don't worry about it. Okay, so carry on. Oh, I was waiting for something no, then. No, no, no. So, well, she made that. Oh! And, and then... I thought it was going to be something exciting. Okay, the one you're, you've just picked up. Yes. It's the second most popular, and it's in single figures now. Oh, sorry. I mean, I can use the others, but it's just no, no, such, no, it's a, such a beautiful colour. But it, it's... it's it is aqua, isn't it? But it is quite a dark aqua, isn't yes. it? It's really lovely. And then you can see from this picture here that I've done one of the sides are... Oh, that is stocking stitch because that is uh, one row plain, one row purl, one row plain, one row purl, yeah. and you alternate. And then that one is garter stitch. So every row is a knit stitch. Right. So it looks... I think from when you were asking, does it take more? It actually looks like it should take more. Yeah, yeah, because it looks it? like there's more loops, but obviously they're on, there's loops on the other side, but we just can't see but them. But they are behind. Yes. So yeah. you've just got a whole yeah. row of. of so that behind. cushion cover there took three balls. Took if you bought balls. this, you could make that. The three balls. And what I would do, it, it is on the website. Um, it was just literally, I took the three balls. This is a 24 inch cushion. Yeah, it doesn't want to stand up yet. That's a 24 inch cushion that one is, so it's quite a large cushion. And that took the three balls. So I did, um, I, I cast on and then I completely knitted one ball with garter stitch. So every single row plain. Then I got the second ball and because um, it's, it's so big, but you can undo it and then I found the halfway point in that. And that literally took seconds. Right. Because I just I completely unraveled it found the two ends yeah in fact i would do that now you could have measured it oh so yeah so i will undo the ball oh well that one's not going back <laughs> good so i can make something with that i would never get that back in after so i found my two ends yeah and then i just put them together and keep going it does it looks like a big long spaghetti doesn't it mm. And then, so I'm in the middle now, yep. and then all I did was I tied a different colour piece of cotton around there, or you can just mark it with something. Yep. And then as you're knitting, when you get to that, well, keep an eye on it because you don't want to get to it just in case you're mid-row. So as you're getting to near it, stop at the end of the row um, and then change the stitch. So you would knit garter stitch for one and a half balls. As yes. soon as you get to that, then change to stocking stitch. Right, because that's if you want to do two different if sides. You wanted to if you're do doing all yes. the same side, doesn't matter. And then you just keep going until you've knitted all three balls. Yeah. Um, and then fold it in half and sew two sides up and then insert your cushion. So you can see that, uh, so I'm back. So that it, it didn't, um, it doesn't take too long, but it will give you the centre yeah. of the ball. So we're going to start with our knitting now. Right, okay, can I just show these again, just in case course. you haven't seen these. These are the Knit Pro Jumbo Circular something or other, for those who love to knit. You're going to see how it works now. I've not opened mine. You're going to see how it works now. £10 and 49 pence. Oh yeah, like Jumbo Birch Knitting Pin Circular Fixed. 25 by 80 centimetres. No skipping, little Paul. No, I couldn't, but we'll get little Paul out to dance on the table for us. <gasps> Has he got his little leprechaun outfit? Oh, he's got a poorly knee, can't he? Right. Oh, is that, I haven't no, seen No, 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 it's serious. Oh no, oh, we can't, I can't mock the knee. It's a fit. Oh, that's not nice once your knees go, is well, it? Well, it went years ago and yeah. he was given the wrong advice. Ooh, so. Say no more. So we do exactly the same when we're knitting. We're going to start off with a, uh, a slip knot. Right. So remember the yarn that is attached to the, the ball of wool, which is your working yarn, yeah. and there's a little tail. So we put our tail over the working yarn, and some people do it the other way, so it doesn't matter which way you do it, whichever way feels comfortable. Oh, now, to I'm you. just going to be messaging, I'm sure, saying I'm left handed. Is it the same for me? So, the, yeah, you can do it, it's yeah, it I, that, but yeah, it's yeah. exactly the same. I mean, I, I, as you know, I'm a lefty, but I tend but to work, do... Right. I do everything right-handed. Um, I think that's because of my age, actually, John. Because you weren't given a choice. Well, every time I was at school, this teacher would come around and take the hand, it out of my left and put it in my right, and every time she turned around, I put it back again. Yeah. But you, could, you would know that I would do that, wouldn't you? So, yeah, we put our working yarn over, reach through, and make a slip knot. Right. And that's all we do. And that just simply means that you can pull that loop to be as small or as big as you want. At this right. point, it just slips. That's yeah. why it's called a slip knot. Now, then what you need to do is a lot of people use the thumb method to cast on, but I've always done it. It was the way I was taught. I've always done it. It might be easier to do the thumb method. 
but I'm going to do it with the needles. So you would just put both your needles through the loop and you pull it, don't pull it too tight, that loop. Right. I'm going to turn it round because I want the working yarn on this side. And then all we're going to do, we're going to cast on. Now, you have to be quite firm with these because <laughs> they're, not very, they're not very long, but they're quite fat and they've got a mind of their own. But they well, are a bit like that little Paul. <laughs> I wouldn't have said that. <laughs> Neither would he. He's gone very quiet now. He has gone very quiet, hasn't he? Um, so all you're going to do is we're going to cast on. So we take our working yarn and we just take it around the right needle and right. then we pull that right needle back, picking up that loop. Right, do that okay. again. Oh, sorry, let me, oh, go on. Oh, no, that, that's not the whole, that was, that was half of it, that was. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so right, I, so you put, you've got both needles yeah, through. So I'm putting it through that loop there. Yeah. So I'm putting it in, Yeah. round, Yeah. and pull the right needle back. I'm holding it with my right hand and pull the loop up. Is and this how you do it with normal, normal knitting? knitting? So people do normal knitting. Exactly this is the same. And this is casting on. This is casting on. And then all I'm going to do is then just go through the back of the one on the right to transfer it to the left. Right. And that's a cast on stitch. Right. You do need to, if you're doing the cushion, well, if you're doing anything with, a, um, with that first cast on row, it needs to be really loose here. Right. And I always say, which obviously I can't do in this instance because these are big fat ones anyway, but I would always normally say go up a size to cast on if you want a bit bigger, but you can't wait. Oh, so if you were knitting a normal jumper you, and you'd use size, I don't know, what's an eight needle, you'd cast on on a nine. Depending what I was doing, because some, some of the jumpers, you actually have a smaller welt, so you would start casting on with a smaller pair oh, okay. of needles. Okay, yeah. So again, it depends what you're going to do. Yeah. Um, but you want to have quite a nice wide gap between here to start for the next one. Okay. And then to, to start to cast on the next stitch, we're simply going to go in between. So we've gone in between, right. I'm trying to show, yeah, in between those two stitches. And then we take the working yarn around that right needle and it's exactly the same. We pull that right needle and the loop. Yeah. And then we put the left needle into Through. the back of it. So I think this is a good way to teach people how to knit it's in the first place. That's instance, what I was thinking. Because my tried to teach me, and all of this was way too tight on the needles and everything. Whereas if you'd had a bigger, thick needle, yes, it's cumbersome, but you're actually learning the technique far well, more Well, whenever, um, with, with all my YouTube videos, I make sure that when I'm sh showing crochet, I do it one or two or even three sizes up because the, th the most important thing about knitting and crochet is that you need to know what you're doing. It's not just that, oh yeah, you knit that or you, you need to know first of all how you're doing it and mm. what you're doing. And if you have a better understanding, you're going to have a much nicer garment yeah. at the end of it. Um, a lot of people just go straight into here, but again, it was, um, you know, my mum won awards for her knitting. She, um, she taught me, this was the way that I've always been taught. Yeah. And it's kind of hard then to change when you've no, done it. it is, yeah. uh, but again, so I go, through the back of the stitch I've just created and yarn round that right hook pulling the hook and the loop back with it to create a bigger hoop yeah. bigger loop and then I just twist and put that left needle in so that's another stitch and I think it gives a really nice finish um, to the bottom of your garment but there are other ways out there and I'm not saying this is the way you have to do it um, but because of that spine that we've got in there, you will find sometime that there is a bit of resistance when you pull it through. Yeah. And that's why that I've said it's probably better to have a really loose tension when working these. So I'm just going to cast on a few more because hopefully if people want to know how to do it, they can just keep rewinding. And you will notice because the needles are quite short, that the stitches pop back onto the little skipping rope. Right. Um, to Paul's pit skipping rope. Um, don't worry about that. Because you've knitted the, the stitch on the big fat needle, it's going to be a big loop. So it oh, doesn't so it's matter. not going to suddenly go tight. It's not going to shrink wire. down, no. Okay. It's, um, and that's like with any. I love circular needles, and a lot of people don't know that you can actually knit straight with circular. They think you've only got to knit in the round. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do now, we're just going to start knitting. Um, so I'm just going to go back along this row now. So I'm going to put in the first stitch, I'm going to put my right needle through the back of that first stitch. Yeah. Yarn over and pull it back. Now this time, instead of pulling it up and twisting it and create a new stitch, I just pull it off. Right. So that's it. So and then I go into the next one, into the back of the next one, so back to front. 
yarn around that right needle, pull the right needle back to create a loop yeah, and pull and that pull it off. off. Now, if you'll notice that I'm actually leaving it very loose because sometimes when you do this, you would then pull this a little bit tighter, but I want this loop really loose because I want it nice and big. But you don't have to. If you want to do it tight here, tighter, then you can. The thing that I would say, the tighter you do any form of knitting, sometimes it, it squeaks and you find it a little bit hard to yes, get it off yeah. the needle. Um, so that's all we do. That's all we do there. Oops. Right, so remember me saying to you that these slip on. Sorry, it's got a little bit. These slip yeah. on here. So you just pull them up that needle. There we go. And because you've already formed them on that big needle, they're still going to be the right size. I started the wrong side, actually. They've gone around, that's it. They are a little bit, um, sometimes they don't behave, but you just yeah. have to be, you have to be boss of them. Yes. They are such fun to work with, though. There we go. And the, Move the your head back just above. <laughs> Thank you. So I, I told you, when I caught, you didn't see my tongue coming out as well, did oh. you? <laughs> Okay, I've lost, um, I'm not chatting to you on Facebook Live because I've now lost Facebook Live. So anyway. I've done the first row and you'll see that now I've got that, that needle is free. Yes. That's just dangling about doing what it wants yeah. to do. So we can now start the, the next row. So you always start with the needle that's got the working yarn. That's where you put the next one in. Right. So you wouldn't put it that way around, you'd put it that way around. Yeah. So we go from back to front, yarn over. I'm pulling the needle back and a loop and then taking it off the hook. So I'm back to front, yarn round, pulling that right needle back through and then off. I've had a question from Marjorie. Marjorie, yes. they're 100% polyester. 100, I know it says wool in the box, but they're 100% polyester. I think they're all, they're all, they'll all be the same. And in the kit, you get in each bundle, you get three balls. Yeah, it's hundred percent polyester. They're all exactly the same. Hundred percent polyester. And you get if you buy for twenty nine ninety nine, you get three of the pomegranate or three of the aqua, three of the willow or three of the rose quartz. Sorry, I didn't. And then they do knit up very very quickly. Well, They're yeah, lovely. I can see, yeah. They they do. And I I really have enjoyed the finger knitting. So did you do that cushion on on those circular? On I just feel like how many stitches across is that there? Right. So this one. Is 18 stitches right and then I did one ball completely with um, garter stitch and then a half of the next ball with garter but how many stitches have you got how many have you cast on there two four six eight you see so you've got more than twice the amount how do they I, I, I'd be I think they'd all be scrunched up not at all because that's what this is for yeah so, would you like me? I tell you what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to. Oh yeah, we've got plenty of time. Yeah, I'm going to cast on. Yeah, because so I just think I'm people are going to see how many say... I can do. Of course they are, and and actually that that is that is a very very valid point. When you buy circular needles, this always you can buy it in different lengths. Oh, okay. So you can get. I think it starts at 40 centimeters. Not with the larger ones because. Um, you know they are quite unique these yes, ones, course, but yeah. when you when you've got small ones and you can get really tiny ones. Oh, okay. So well, I think Kay Fassett knits on um, circular needles. So you can get like a hundred centimetre ones. So that if you want to do a big blanket, because a lot of people don't realise that first of all you wouldn't be able to get that many stitches on a needle. Yeah. So that's the first thing. But secondly, it's the weight distribution. Yeah. So as you're doing a big blanket and you've got them on the side of your needles, they kind of do this and yeah. this. Whereas are, you, are we going to show that, Hannah, or should I just say it? And we've got, apparently, we've got different sizes of these Ooh. on the website here. Oh, yes, yes. Here so you you'll go. see there that it will say on that one. So that one's a 60 centimetre. Oh, is it 40? I can't I see, can't from, see here. from here. I can't see from here. No, I can't see from here. Where are the wooden bits at the end? Oh, I see, I see. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. I understand now. There's a, there, I recognise that one right, there. That, more, what yeah. does that say? Does that say 60 centimetres? 449 one says 60 centimetres. Right. So that's 60 centimetres. 80 centimetres yep, by 80. 50 millimetres. There's 100 centimetres and it depends really oh, okay, what you brilliant. want to do. So if you want to do something fairly small, then you would go for a, a shorter length. But if you want to do a really big blanket, there is absolutely no way that you would be able to get 100 centimetres worth of stitches on a normal knitting needle. No, no, of course not. And as I say, um, the weight distribution, it means that um, it's better on your shoulders. 
because I'm wondering if that's what Kate was doing because he had, seemed to have so much he used to do it in the green room at the same quarter and he'd have so much knitting here I mean, admittedly he had about eight different balls of wool going in at the same time as well but I could never I thought he was just a so in a tube, but obviously no. not. Could, yeah. No, I, and, and I think a lot of people do think, well, I can't possibly use circular needles because you've got to go round. Mm. Absolutely not. They're perfect for knitting straight. And it's something that I haven't really done it for many, many years. Um, because as I say, I was taught by my mum and she was very, um, she was very old school where she wouldn't, she'd go, oh, I'm not using them. Mm. So she would just struggle with needles. Yeah. And um, the longer the needle, the more needle, the more stitches you can get on, but of course they're harder to work with. Yeah. Whereas, see, I'm, I'm going. So if you're knitting socks, for example, yes. normal socks, right? Do you know, not use normal needles or do you use needles on a circle like that? They're slightly different. So you'd probably, oh, okay. you, that, that's a completely different thing. You probably use four needles, um, double-ended needles. They're completely different. Oh, okay, socks. I won't But you don't question. have to, we'll again, um, people are always designing new things. So I have seen people just doing them on two. Oh, I see. Um, so you don't knit a tube. You've, you've got, you do knit a tube. You've got it on four different. The difficulty is if, you, if you've only got a few stitches um, and a long circular needle, by the time you've got back to the first one, it's too, it's overstretched. So, um, yeah, normally it's fascinating watching people knit socks. Yeah. And that's there was a whole conversation because a lot of my ladies knitted me socks last year for, for presents and everything. But um, I, there's been a whole conversation going on on Facebook, on the Facebook yes. fan page about knitting socks and everything. And so. they're amazing. Um, so you can see, look, I'm just going and going and going. Oh, and it? Yeah. it just goes around. I think it almost makes it simpler the more stitches you've got because it there looked go. very confusing. When you only had your 12 on, it looked nice. like they were all bunching up and everything. Whereas now I can see it's a whole line. You can just keep going and going and going. And, and what you can do, you see, you can bunch them. They can bunch up around this this yeah, oh yes, yeah. yes, 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 yeah. Because you're uh, only actually going to be using on the next one along definitely. on the wooden. But of course, remember, because the wooden, this one, as I say, this is a fairly short needle. And this, this is standard for the 25 mil because, you know, again, it's weight. You wouldn't mm. want a huge weight there. So it does mean that every few stitches you do have to pull them up. So the more stitches you've got on. But uh, remember me saying to you that because you've created them on that fat barrel, by the time they get here, they're not going to suddenly shrink to be yes, the size yeah. of that. Okay. So, um, yes, that's all we do. And then I'm just going to, just going to knit a couple. So they, they do have a tendency to um, um, play up a little bit, but I love, I love working with these needles. And I love seeing something grow that quick, John. Yes. I'm all for, and, and I, um, I very often knit with something like seven strands of wool. And it's such a pain because I'm always getting them in a muddle. Whereas this is like knitting. Why what, seven strands of wool? I love chunky things. Absolutely. It's very, very in at the moment, John. Okay, now hang on. So you've got seven. Oh, you mean that it's not seven different bits of wool? Yeah, seven okay. strands of wool. So, um, and I'm not even anywhere near that thickness. So you could imagine how many like double knits that they equate to. Yeah. And you haven't got them all on the floor, bouncing around all over the place. I mean, I do try and keep them tidy but all of a sudden they just go flying off yeah. whereas the beauty of knitting something like this is that you're knitting a huge thick strand and it's working up so quick mm. so I'm just knitting and then you do exactly the same I'm just going to get to the end yeah because I and then all you do is just once you've worked past the ones you just pull them up and you see they've not got any smaller just by going down that little no. and you just keep going and going and then as I say that one there um, was created I haven't actually shown the pearl stitch I don't know if you wanted to quickly oh, yeah, 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 get yeah. me to show I'm just trying to, of course I'm just trying to get to the end that was because um, I've put so many stitches on now yeah but no, 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 it's, show, it's good no. to show though because I, it was when I when you only did a few stitches I thought oh I couldn't do that I'd be confused all the time but actually now you've got more stitches on it's actually more obvious now it so. is and, the, and as you can just see all I'm having to do which is is no trouble at all I just keep pulling them up from the um what's the bit in the middle called it's Why? Not, uh, it's the, what, well, it's skipping not. rope. Uh, you've got four minutes left Brilliant. on the demo. So I would just get to the end here because I don't want to do And you're that. just doing normal... I'm just doing a normal knit stitch, right. which is the one that I showed where um, you just um, have the yarn. Because we're, now we're going to do a purl stitch. Right. So the yarn is at the front this time. Yeah. So instead of going from back to front, yeah. we're now going to have the yarn at the front and we're going to go that way. Right. 
and the yarn over the front needle, pull it over to create a loop and take, take it, it off. off. And that's just a pearl. So we use the right needle comes from back to front, yarn around that front one, pull it over and off. And that's a pearl stitch. So that's what, um, remember me saying to you that um, the way, when you do um, one row plain, one row pearl, that's what creates, oh, I just realised something actually, John. If I turn this in the other way, you're going to see what I mean with the stocking stitch. So if I put these together, right there, so that is one row play, one row pearl, one row play, one row pearl. And that's what it looks like at the back. You remember me saying that because you're pulling the yarn back over, you're kind of creating that stitch, but it's much, much denser. Yes. Because every row you're pulling that yarn back. Whereas so is that's the back of that's it? The and I I really, that's the back. I, now you've said that, I actually prefer the black. So apart from I shall sort the tails out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to have it that way around because I love it that way. That's, I love that. Absolutely love that. That looks, that, no offence to yours, but that looks a lot more designer. Exactly. And that, but, but that's the back of the knitting. And normal yes. knitting, would you show the back of the So I could have done that. I could have, instead of putting my it this way round, I could have flipped yes. it the other way so and had that effect. if you're doing normal effect. knitting for yes. a jumper, do you ever knit it and then use the back as the front? Very yeah. often. Okay. I do. Got a lot I, to learn. Yeah. I, well, it depends, but that's me. Yeah. Not, not <laughs> but, but again, arts and crafts are about your interpretation. It's all down to mm, you. No, totally. Mm. Brilliant. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. Thank uh, when are you next, you know? Yes, I'm in on the 21st. Of December. Yes. 21st of December. She'll be back. Right. So let's just do a quick round up. Start with the willow. I know. Which is the grey one, John, she said. There you go. Willow. Willow. Three balls you get. Now it's 100% polyester, remember? They've written wool. Oh, no. It says yarn there. Where does it say wool? Oh, in the description it says wool. It's not wool, it's polyester. £29.99. 100% polyester. So that's willow. That's the most popular colour so far. Very, very limited. I've got Elliot there on the, the, the what's it line to put those away. Next. Uh, the um, aqua. No, 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 I, I knew it was aqua, but in that my brain was going, I'm tired and I really don't know what to <laughs> You get three balls of this yarn. This is aqua. Now, if you're going to look at the, at the, wherever it's from, they do do other aquas. So don't think this will automatically, because um, Wendy had another one in her box that we'd sent to her. She went, this is aqua. And I went, no, this is aqua, but they're both called aqua. So just be careful of that. So you get three of those for 29.99. Beautiful and soft, it's so lovely. 100% polyester. What's next? It's Elliot's putting away, it's fine. Which one? Pomegranate. You mean rose quartz? Don't people need love in their lives? The rose quartz is not the most popular. Right, oh, everyone's loved up today. They don't need the rose quartz. So, the pomegranate, you get three balls, for better want of a better word. Oh, okay. Oh, that's Elliot. Thank you. There we go. So this is rose quartz, twenty nine ninety nine. If you need a bit of love, because you know rose quartz, the gemstone brings love into your life. I've got a huge, the biggest bowl of rose quartz in my bedroom. You could ever imagine. Lucy Brennan told me to put it there. It's done nothing, nothing. It's done nothing for me. It just gathers dust. $29.99. Thanks, Paul. He went, that's a shock. There's nobody coming through your front door. Anyway, 29 29 Now, we can't win blooming isolation, aren't we? $29.99. Thank you, Elliot, my lovely. Right, here we go. I've got many needles on a string. Ten pounds and forty-nine pence. These are the jumbo birch knitting pins, circular fixed. 
Ten pounds and forty nine pence they are. Okay, now I won't I won't put those over the edge in case they hit Elliot on the head. So we'll do these instead. Oh, they look a bit sad on their own there, don't they? These are brilliant. These are brilliant. I love only two ninety nine. Oh, no, no, I shouldn't say this. Twelve days of Christmas. Twelve days of Christmas. Anyway, look, they're lovely. Look, they've got these loopy bits on them. Look. So if you, yes, yeah, that's what the, the free PP for the whole of um, January, if you've done the six, six of the 12 days of Christmas, uh, it's on Yarn Lane as well as uh, Sang Street. Okay, that goes there. And then a pair of skizzers. Always handy, always handy. Rebecca, Rebecca Reed, we're not allowed to call her Bex anymore. Rebecca Reed loves these scissors, $13.99. Mind you, I was, watching, I was watching her the other day and I'm going to have to give her a lesson about what she can and can't say on air, I'll tell you that much. Right, oh yes, uh, right, and I'll be just saying goodbye. Anyway, thanks ever so much for your company today. Uh, it's been a good day, hasn't it? We will see you, well no, Sewing Street will see you tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, it's me, with Janice. And then uh, Yarn Lane, I presume, will be back on Monday, because it's usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday, isn't it? Anyway, thanks ever so much for your help, not for your help. <laughs> <laughs> You really helped me out today. Thank you to Wendy and thank you to our lovely new guest who was called Dawn. Dawn. Uh, and thanks for your help, Hannah. We, I'll see you tomorrow morning. <laughs>